The next step is taking off this hard coal that we are using to backfill up to the formation level. You see, uh, in the in external trench, we have this hard coal in the inside face, which we are backfilling. Then, in the internal trenches, we have hard coal up to formation level. This one, we are using it in to replace the soil. Instead of uh, backfilling using soil, we are backfilling using hard coal. So to find the volume of this hard coal in the inside face of the external wall, we need to find the center line of this hard coal. How do we find the center line of this hard coal? We need to take the, uh-huh, let me show you. Uh, we have this uh, plan. You see the hard coal, we are placing it on the inside of the external walls. All right. Then we are placing it on the inside of the external walls. Then also in the internal walls. Here, we will place the hard core. All right. So in the inside of the trenches, we'll backfill using the hard core and also around the internal walls. So how do we find the volume of that? We need to find the center line of the trench inside the internal walls. I don't... It is... Uh, the center line of the trench space that has been left inside the external walls. This trench, the spread. We find the center line of this spread inside. All right. So how do we find that? We'll take the uh, internal perimeter of this internal wall. Then we deduct number of corner stems, the thickness of that spread. All right. So what is the internal perimeter? The internal perimeter is 38.676. We will deduct number of corners, which is 4, which was number of external corners. Deduct number of internal corners, so it's 4, multiplied by 248.5. Alright, so it shall be 994. So, uh, we shall take the total uh, exter internal perimeter. Then we deduct 994 to get the center line of the spread in the inside of the external walls we get that is 7.682 then uh, we shall deduct the intersection with the internal walls the internal walls uh, it will be 2 times 100 you see uh, in this plan when we are laying the hard core we were supposed to come and lay it everywhere mm -hmm. then lay it this way but now we have these internal walls that have already replaced the hard coal where they should be. And the thickness is 100. So we'll take 100 times 2. So it will be 2 times 100, 200. So we shall deduct because only this length is where we shall have the hard coal. So what is the depth so that you can be able to calculate the volume? So we shall take uh -huh, in the external walls... Um, we shall take the depth for the hard core from here up to here. It shall be, uh, because we are not given from here up to here, we will take uh, 750. 750 is the depth from... Uh, because we are not given from here up to here, we will have to calculate. Uh, remember when we excavated the topsoil from the ground level, we got to the formation level. So from the ground level to the formation level, it was 150. So 675, we did that 150. We shall get uh, 5, 675 minus 150, it is 525. 525 plus 225, it's 750. 750, we deduct the concrete, which is 225. We shall get... 525 all right so uh the internal wall the length of the internal wall what will it be it will be 6.697 because we will take from the length shall be from here up to here from yes from here up to here because the hard core which will be here will be for the external wall so we will take the length from here up to here and it is the one which is 6.697. What is the width of the uh, hard coal that we shall put in the internal walls? You see, uh, for the internal trench, it is 450. 
we shall only deduct this high, this wall which is 100 so that you can get the width here and here so for 50 less 100 we shall get 350 all right so uh what is the volume of the hard cores it shall be we shall take the center line of uh the hard cores in the external wall which is 37.45, then we multiply by the width of the uh, hard call on the spread, the spread on the inside, it is 0 0.25, then we shall multiply by the depth of the external wall, eh? the, of the hard call, 0 0.53, just as you have calculated above there. For the internal walls, we shall take the length of that wall, divided, uh, multiplied by the width of the hard call, then the depth of the hard call. So this is the hard call specification, filling to excavation, greater than, uh, it is less than, it is greater than 250 average thickness. We have started with the external walls, then we have gone to the internal walls. The next step is, uh, taking off uh, the excavated material uh, we are calculating the backfilling needed uh, now we are going to uh, take off the soil that we shall need to backfill outside the external trench see uh, in the section that we have you see here inside we have uh, backfilled using the hard core outside here we need to backfill using the soil so we need to take off the soil from here up to the formation level then we take from the formation up to the ground level so from the here on top of the concrete to the formation level what is the volume of that soil so because we have the external uh, perimeter we will only uh, add number of corners times the uh, the width of the spread the spread is to 48.5 so to get the center line of the spread on the outside uh -huh. the center line of reinstatement uh, we shall take and you know it's like the center line of reinstatement which is like the center line of the outside of the trench here it means the same because uh, the outside the trenches is where we are going to refill backfill all the soil all right so it shall be the external perimeter we add number of corners times the width of the spread it's 994 so it shall be 41.694 the depth of uh, the excavation is 675 it shall be you see uh here in the ex excavation it's 675 then we had deducted 150. we have said the top soil is reinstated separately from the soil in the trenches so it shall be 675 we deduct 150 we get 525 so when we are booking it we shall say 41.69 which is the center line of the excavated material on the outside of the wall multiplied by the width of that um, spread on the outside 0 0.25 then with the depth of our uh, backfilling is 0 0.53 so it is excavated material filling to excavation greater than 250 millimeters average thickness arising from the excavations then that volume of soil we need to deduct the excavated material of site Why are we saying this? It's because the first time that we excavated the trenches, that soil, we added it to uh, excavated material to be disposed away from site. Now we need some of that soil. So this volume of soil that we need to backfill on the outside of the trenches, we shall deduct that volume from that soil that we were supposed to dispose away from the site. So that's why you can see it's written I uh, deduct the disposal excavated material off site all right now we shall go to uh, taking off the soil that we need to reinstate now the top soil uh, so that it can take the ground level we shall take the same center line of reinstatement we multiply by the uh, spread on the outside which is 0 0.25 then the depth of the top soil which was 0 0.15 why uh, do we take this off? You see, uh, by the time we are done with backfilling, this site shall have a hole here. Because the ground level is at this level, then here we have constructed a wall and we have constructed. So here there will be a hole. So how do we reinstate that soil? We backfill it. Eh? So that's why we are taking off this part. So we take the center line of reinstatement, we multiply by the wing or that is the spread on the outside of the trench, then we, we multiply by the depth 
which is 150 millimeters. So we shall say excavated material filling to excavations less greater than or equal to 250 millimeters average thickness obtained from on site spoil heaps, that is topsoil, to replace the topsoil. This uh, for the uh, reinstatement, you can get it from the spoil heaps. You remember that topsoil that we had put in spoil heaps so that we can go and dispose because that was the topsoil and we were not using it. So this soil uh, for reinstatement, this one actually, the best part to get it from it's from that soil that was preserved for from the spoil heaps of the topsoil instead of getting it from this soil that was going to be disposed away from site because this soil can be used elsewhere but this one you can just use it because it is not soil which is good for construction and we just want to uh, go back to the, our initial level okay